delighted now to be joined by Mary O'Connor, the CEO of the Federation of Irish Sport. The call has gone out today for extra support from government for sport in its widest context through the creation of a resilience fund aimed at sport in its widest context at the highest level, all the way through to clubs working in their communities. Mary, can you just tell us a little bit about what the resilience fund might look like from your perspective? Uh, the Federation uh, represents 110 sporting organisations on the island of Ireland and over the last number of weeks, over the last 10 weeks I suppose, there has been an increasing call and concern around the financial implications of, of COVID-19 for sport and obviously then the uncertainty as well because nobody knows where it's going to end. Um, the resilience fund that we're looking for is, is a support mechanism and obviously in the individual national governing bodies and clubs would access the fund um, if there's a need. So anybody who would access that fund if it becomes available, we have to produce evidence of need. Um, everybody um, is being challenged by, by COVID-19 currently in the island of Ireland and sport is no different. It's being relied upon currently to keep people um, active um, and, and their well-being. Um, in their own houses and their own in 5k uh, but sport as the way we normally see it is under severe pressure and um, no income and uh, no gate receipts no generation of membership no hosting of summer camps coaching courses no sponsorship because there's no activities has all had huge implications for sport so we're looking for the resilience fund uh, to come and support sport um, and to get them through uh, COVID-19 and obviously then to look and help with them in the recovery post-pandemic as well. And this goes, this goes way beyond. We've, we've heard figures quoted by Irish Rugby and by the GAA and by the FAI in terms of multi-million hits to, to those organisations. But this goes wider than that as well. I mean, this is into all of our clubs in the communities as well. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I would be at pains to say that, you know, I don't want believe, people to believe that sport can be taken for granted. Uh, people will expect sport to exist in all its guises post-pandemic as it was just before the crisis hit our shores. But the reality is different. Um, our sport is under significant pressure and in particularly at club level. Um, clubs would operate on a system of generating their own membership and their own types of revenue, even through things like club lottos. Um, and clubs in both rural and urban areas have ceased, have seen that type of income um, dry up, but they still have fixed costs, so fixed costs around insurance. Some clubs might have commercial mortgages or, or loan repayments and so on that they have to contend with, but yet now they have no income. So what we're looking for is that resilience fund, not just to be for the national governing bodies of sport, but also for, for clubs in both rural and urban areas to access should they need it. Um, some clubs might need working capital as little as 1,500 euros. Some might need significantly more than that, but it would be done on a case by case basis. Um, so what we're saying is, you know, obviously we're very conscious of the, the, the extreme pressure on the public finances at the moment, but what we're also able to state is that for every 100 euros that the Irish government invests in the Ireland of Ireland um, and in sport, that they get a return of 195 euros for that investment. And that's really important. Sport in this country economically is worth 2.7 billion in annual consumer spending, and it employs 40,000 people. So it has huge economic value. A lot of us just want to play it, enjoy it, and, and be entertained by it. But it needs, must be recognized that it is an industry as well. And at a localized level, it's really important, particularly in rural areas, Rob, where you know this local sports club, the local community hall is the real focal point because obviously of you know, local shops closing down, maybe public houses closing down, that the community hub is that local sports, sports pitch or that sports hall, and that must be supported. It must be kept a sacrosanct. Okay, we, we do. We tend to think of sport as being either at the very highest level in Crow Park and the Aviva Stadium and then all the way through to our own local community clubs where it's, it's volunteerism that goes. But 40,000 jobs on the line potentially across, the, across different sport. Where, where are most of those jobs actually existing within sport? Obviously, you know, you got the national governing bodies of sport would help, would, would have uh, administrators that also have development officers that are people working on the ground at local level in schools and communities uh, trying to inc increase the audience of people participating in sport. Obviously, then you have the different industries like the horse, horse sport industry and, and so on. So it's a cross cross section of, of, of sports that employ, employ people. Um, and I think it's really important to recognize that, but it's also to important to recognize that sport exists in so many guises all over 
um, the country in, in every community and it must be supported because that enhances Ireland's social fabric and I suppose it in increases the opportunity for people to um, integrate with each other and communicate with each other and it brings a huge sense of well-being and at the moment that's being really challenged because of people not being able to go outside their 5k because of people cocooning it's never been more important i think that has been i suppose evident in the amount of sports volunteers who have gone out of their way to volunteer for people in terms of who couldn't get out of their own houses to do grocery shopping pick up subscriptions at the pharmacist and so on they've shown huge community spirit and you know where would we be without our sports volunteers it is kind of obvious the benefits that sport brings in terms of physical activity, whether it be running, cycling or playing in, in a team sport. But you're right, that, that connection through the mental well-being is something which sports clubs have actually been pretty good at over the course of the last 10 weeks, that they have played an important role in their communities, both urban and rural. Do you think, is there a sense that sport may now look, if not overtly, but in some sense for a reward on that so that we have behaved well over the course of this but now that there is a need there so that we can actually get back to doing what we do in terms of providing sporting facilities and providing whether it be in a gymnastics club a basketball club or an athletics club it all needs money and I guess sport really should be to the fore as well as every other sector in calling for that. Yeah I think the very nature of, of sports people and sports organisations they're altruistic and they go out and they actually support their community because they see the value in it. I don't think anybody acted the way they have been acting in terms of their volunteerism to look for reward. They've been doing that because they believe in the community of sport. Um, and I think that's really, really important point to get across. But I think what they've actually shown is the, and, and have increased or enhanced the value of, of sport and physical activity to Ireland. And I think, you know, if that's rewarded by resilience funds, it should be seen as resilience funds to actually make sure that that uh, great work is continued and that sport organizations and sport clubs remain viable. As I said earlier on, you know, it's, it's about looking for working capital to make sure that sport can continue to do its good work. And um, it would cost an awful lot more money to restart sport rather than just support it as a means now. Um, so the Federation of Irish Sport, we're looking for the Resilience Fund. We're also looking for a task force that can lead um, the sports recovery from COVID-19. We need, we need innovation and we need swift action. And we are calling on the government to, as, as support, to support that and to actually work with us to try and ensure that sport can act, be active and as, be as vibrant as it has been. Okay, and it, it won't happen by accident. Like this week, we start to see those first green shoots. We've got people out on the water and rowing. We've got athletics coming back, golf, tennis, and, and some of the equestrian sports as well. But how, how proactive has sport been in terms of working with government to make sure that we had a, you know, a, a signpost on that roadmap to recovery? Yeah, I mean, it can't be underestimated the amount of work that has gone in by national governing bodies of, of sport and in the, the local clubs, the volunteers, to try and ensure that sport returns, but sport returns in a safe way. So different things that, you know, volunteers probably wouldn't have to have content with in, in a large sense would have been risk assessments, but national governing bodies have put together these return to sports protocols. And we welcome the announcement at the weekend of the return to sport expert group. That's really important. And that's gonna be uh, there to assess the consistency of the return to sport protocols, because we want to give people confidence and to feel safe to come back and enjoy the sports they did before the, the COVID-19 hit these shores. And I think that's a really important factor. I think psychologically, some people will need um, that confidence boost to say, hey, it is safe to go back and enjoy the sports that you already participated in. Um, but again, it's uncertain. And there's a huge responsibility on those sports who came back first, and they know that. And the responsibility on them to obviously to adhere to do their own protocols and to ensure that their members respect uh, the fact that you know this is a, an uncertain time and um, I, I think that they've shown great leadership the national governing bodies and Sport Ireland have been working really hard with them to ensure that they're supported in trying to get people back uh, into their sport or be physically active. Great. We're obviously aware of the fact that this is reliant on public health advice and, and all the way through. Um, on a personal note, Mary, you've, you've won more All-Irelands across more sports than most of us would ever be able to dream of. We know that sport is going to come back. Are you, are you confident in a personal sense that it will come back as strong as it has always been in an Irish context? 
I think in Irish context, it'll come back even stronger. Um, but I, 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 I think it'll come back even stronger because people are, have taken it for granted. I think now they're realizing, wow, well, um, sport is so important in our lives. Um, I would have, you know, huge empathy for the for the athletes, not just high performance athletes, obviously, but also athletes who just participate in sport for fun and enjoyment and that social piece. You know, that's been taken away from them, and that's very difficult for for elite athletes. Their mindset it must be very difficult to stay motivated and to be assured in what they're doing. For the people who just participate in sport for you know the recreation and social, that's been taken away from them. Um, I think sport in this country has always been important. I think it's going to play a hugely important role as we're coming out of this because people will look to sport uh, for enjoyment uh, and so on and to meet their friends again. But I mean, I would be confident that you know the, the whole unity of sport, people are coming together and I think people are reflecting on sport now and the important part it plays in their lives. And I'd be hopeful that, you know, as a community of sport, we'll, we'll go forward together and be stronger for, for this pandemic. Great. Well, thanks very much for your time and uh, well done on putting out that call there for the Resilience Fund. We'll now be relying on our political leaders and, and uh, officials to actually say yay or nay to that, but uh, it might not happen straight away overnight. Uh, hopefully, though, it will happen in time for sport to come back stronger. So, uh, Mary O'Connor, Chief Executive of the Federation of Irish Sports, thank you very much. Thanks, Rob.